Thank you. 81333, as long as you start your messages with the letters RH, they'll get here. Uh, and, uh, yeah, and then I'll be able to read them out on the radio, which I suppose is not a bad thing. Now, uh, Tim's here. Good morning, Tim Johnson. Hello. Uh, How Tim, are you doing? I'm doing good, my friend. Now, Tim, uh, we've got a story to tell about you and your band and the fact that there's an album uh, that's come out that uh, you... What, when, when was this album supposed to be coming out? This this uh, Doggy doggy Oswald, the band. When was the album supposed to come out? <laughs> uh, well, we was trying to get it out 36 years ago. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, it's, it's, it's silly, really. <laughs> Um, we recorded it in three sessions, mm-hmm. uh, using uh, three three times we went to the studio, yeah. and uh, we did get a single out from the the album. And the daftest thing was that the lad that joined the band, Rick, um, he insisted we brought out Feeling Down, but he wasn't in the band, and so he wasn't on the song. Right. So we was going to get the two tracks we recorded with Rick, which was uh, the beginning and Stop Look and Listen. But he insisted on having that, and I thought, why? Why, Rick? Because you're not on it. But he said, oh, get it done. So <laughs> we did it, and um, the two songs we did, we thought was far better than Feelings Down. Yeah. And um, <clears throat> it's not, the song wasn't called Feelings Down, it was called Feeling Down. And when we got it back from the record pressing company, they'd mis- misspelt it. <laughs> so we oh, left my. it, and what we found now, they're going for fifty pounders collectors pieces. Oh, flipping egg! Well, so where did so you're, you're based? Uh, you, uh, you, I don't know if you are still based in Hull, but you were based in Hull at the time. Where, where did you record the, yeah. the album? Uh, we did it at Kenny Giles in Brid. It was a it was a lovely little studio, and um, it, we, we went twice. Yeah. And ironically, I think it must have been around about my birthday town, because uh, I looked up the the tracks that we because you get a quarter inch master and I looked at the date of them and it's May and then the next year it was May so I thought we've gone back every year to do this I couldn't remember um, but it was really funny and I thought I bet that's what it is because that's the way I work I like to work on equal things I have to I, I can't go back uh, two or three hours later it's got to yeah. be say 24 hours later you know it's got to be so everything's got to be even if you know what I mean so uh, yeah it was like 36 years ago we did it and we were trying to get a record deal, um, but we couldn't quite succeed to get one. But my tracks, well, these tracks have been in the in my cupboard doing nothing for oh. 36 years. And what I had to do, I had to take them to um, Fairview um, Studios. That's a funny story, yeah. but I won't go on. <laughs> and they, what they do is they transfer it from that to CD. Right. And then you can... Of course, I've got it back on the CD. I can put it on my, my own home studio. Um, should I say home studio is more like a bedroom and a tape recorder, <laughs> um, as you say? But once we've got it on that, we can finish it off. And I did, and I managed to do it and got it a copy to everybody. Unfortunately, though, sadly, two of the lads in the band are no longer with us. Yeah. And um, Stan and Rick, who I used to write songs with, both died. So, but they got the copy before they died, so I was really pleased about that. And um, it's been doing nothing. I went in hospital last year and um, had a bit of a, a ten. Hmm. And I came out and I thought, well, if I hadn't come out of hospital, these tracks would have gone. So yeah. I thought, it's Wouldn't... time. Well, I can now. Let's get them out there, you know. So oh, right. I listened to them again and I thought, wow, these are fantastic tracks. Well, let's I wouldn't that. have thought. I would have thought that I would recorded them 36 years ago. And so I'm going to play um, Strung Up for Rock. Was this one of the tracks yeah. from 36 years ago? That's the one I wrote myself, yeah, and it was it was designed as the title track, but the lyrics in it is more towards the, the audience, that if you if you keep shouting, we can't go away. So that's what we did, and so we did that, and... Um, it was it was going to be the title track of the album, so it, uh, I thought, well, let's you know carry on as we did. Hold on there, Tim. Let's play the tune. We'll chat more after this. Hold on, Tim. <laughs>
36 years ago. Tim, uh, Tim Johnson, <laughs> you're on that playing guitar, I'm guessing. Are you, not, are you singing yeah. as well? That's me singing, yeah. Cool. Look, we squawked in. We did, squawked in them days. Tell you what, did, did it? Uh, does that when you hear that tune now? Do you go back to the you know to nineteen eighty four? Can you remember recording the tune? Can yeah. you got a kind of yeah. the visual memory is still there? I remember it all. The, the thing is, it was. It is probably why I've um, done it because it, everything seems so clear still. You know, after thirty six years, I can still remember what everybody did when we was in there. And um, one of the tracks, there was a, a toilet round the back and we was recording till midnight. And the engineer, he put a snare drum in the toilet of one of the tracks yeah. and he sit in this snare drum and he got all the way through it. He said, I'm glad he did because the neighbors are gonna go mad. <laughs> So that was in well, Brid. So you, why the, the 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 snare drum in the loo? Is that because there was a particular acoustic thing going on in there that worked for for that particular yeah. snare drum? It was it was on um, the song uh, "Stop Look and Listen." He didn't get he, he he wasn't happy with the snare drum sound because he wanted a more of a crack, more of a, a really beefy yeah. snare drum sound, and he couldn't get it off the standard kit. So he took it in there because it was real echoey. And he, he got cable, he must be about 20 yards from the studio, and he sat in there, and Nick sat on the toilet, and he did it in this snare. <laughs> I thought, if anybody turned and walked in and looked and saw him, you know, wanted to go to the toilet and open the door, oh, and there's him sat there dear, with his dear. snare drum going bang, bang, bang. I mean, but, yeah, it's... We're talking about a, a band of music from 1984, but I know you still you still play. And I was watching a bit of video yeah. video of you the other day, and you got that that stack of speakers in your front room. Are you got a detached house, or is it a semi? Or what sort of house you got there? It's fun, isn't it? Um, well, it's um, <clears throat> it's uh, it's like a, it's a terrace house, but it's the end one. All oh, right. But um, if you see some of the vid, I did one which we because we got locked down. I did the middle of the night, so I, I woke up in the middle of the night about two o'clock it was, and I was bored. I couldn't sleep, so <laughs> I went downstairs, turned my st system on, and I just plugged in and, and recorded that. And the next, I went back to bed the next day. I thought, well, this is too good to leave, so I put it on, I put it on, um, on the what my channel on thing, and. Um, I thought, well, everybody said, but you've got great neighbours. I said, well, I have. I really have got good neighbours. <laughs> um, but they didn't even know I'd done it. Really? They, no, they didn't yeah, even know that I'd done it. Soundproofing because, is a wonderful thing. Well, <laughs> either that or they're all deaf. <laughs> but <laughs> they've all gone deaf over the years. But it was a, it was more of a... I did it because it was more to prove to people that you've got big you know, speakers doesn't necessarily mean to say you're going to be loud. And I did that, and um, the neighbours never even knew I'd done it. Oh, mate. Uh, <laughs> we well, never knew he did that. We never knew he had them in the, in the living room. Well, it's not my front room, <laughs> but it's, it looks impressive, doesn't it? It really looks <laughs> fabulous, yeah. Tim, look, we, 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 before I let you go, I've got to ask you about Eddie Van Halen, who it was announced uh, this, yeah. this Tuesday just gone and died. He was, uh, uh, he was I think, only 65. I mean, it's, it's, it's no age at all. He, he formed oh, Van awful, Halen in 72 with his brother Alex. And uh, I, I, I don't know, as a guitarist, whether he, he influenced you at all. I mean, were you able to watch his style and emulate any of that? Well, the thing is, he's one of my heroes, Van Halen. I've I've done a song. I'll come on and talk to you about it. It's a, it's a song I've recorded in four of my heroes. I've done it in their style because I play drums as well, bass mm. and everything. And I've done it, and I've done the drumming as Cozy Powell, so it's like Cozy Powell drumming. I've done the bass as Phil Lino. I've done the guitaring as. Uh, Van Halen and Gary Moore, but the only downside to it is that I'm singing it. You, you, got, you almost got your own super group. You need a Freddie Mercury. That's band, what you need. Yeah. <laughs> at one point, at one point, I did have uh, Lemmy, oh, <laughs> but he didn't fit, so I sacked him and put um, Phil in up back oh, on the bit. But it's fantastic. Dear. But if you wasn't influenced by um, Van Halen, this, you've, you've not been a guitar player, I don't think, because it was one of the best. You know, it's so it is it's so iconic. Like Jimi Hendrix, it was what he did, and Van Halen was the same. You know, he might not be a great classical guitar player, but playing rock guitar, he was the master, and it's the way he did it. And he had that double-handed tapping technique, didn't he? As well, that well, was, this I mean, is yeah, fabulous. And to be honest, that's pretty easy to do. It looks more impressive yeah. than it is, but it's it's pretty easy to do if you know where to put your fingers and you practice hard at that. And he he made that. He invented that. You know, he says he didn't, but as far as everybody's concerned, yeah, you do. If you hadn't done that in the first place, other people would never have copied that. 
but it was you know it, it just cannot you know it's it is a massive shame i was in shock when my brother-in-law texted me and said look, look he's he's uh he's passed away i thought well, if you're joking i had to sit down because it's uh the thing with me when when one of my heroes dies now i'm not going to be able to play much of their songs because it'll upset me and yeah, i have to yeah. wait six six to a year before i can start playing the songs again um, when Rick Parfit died with Quo, it was it just gutted me. I couldn't listen to Quo for two years, and and that's how it gets people. It, that's how it gets me anyway. I'm a real softy. You are. I can yeah. tell you're a real softy, you know, Tim. <laughs> uh, Tim, if people would like to hear the album that you've you've kind of eventually released after thirty odd years, is that easy yeah. to do? Is that on YouTube or where can people hear it? Well, yeah, you can, it's on all the file um, sharing uh, things now. So if you just type in Tim Johnson. Hull in Google, it'll probably bring you up to wherever it is. Um, and I mean, there is you can, you can buy it online, but you can hear it, you know, if you want to. It's it's something I wanted to get out there because left in the cupboard, it's nobody's going to hear it. And no, I thought it's too good an album to to leave there. All and that this work is why I've, into, I've yeah. done this. Very good. Too. Yeah, people uh, still ask me if you know if, if I've got another album out for it, and I, I, unfortunately, I can't record another one of them. But um, I do record my own songs, so but I could come back and explain to you some of them a bit nice later one. on. As Tim. long as it's not half past eight in the morning. OK, <laughs> well, we'll, we'll see. Yeah, let's, yeah, as long as you keep, keep the noise now. Up. I just got up. I might go back to bed for an hour. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Tim Johnson, it's a great pleasure to catch up with you. Uh, Tim is on YouTube if you want to have a look for him there. Uh, or as he said, if you just go into any of the search engines and search for Tim Johnson Hull, you should be able to find him without too much trouble. Tim, thank you. Unsung Hero. The Unsung Hero. Ever present, no matter what.